Thank you, Murray and Serki, for joining me today. Um, we're just going to have a little chat about your webinar that is coming up. And I should have checked the date beforehand, but it's the 16th of May. So we're very much looking forward to that. And the title is Answer to Evil and a Dream of Our Time, which is a very intriguing and interesting title. So I wondered if we could just have a conversation between us just to um, give our colleagues a little flavour of what goes on behind the scenes at WJ or with Ukrainian Jungians to give it its full title. And Murray, could I start with you, if that's OK? Um, mm -hmm. When we did the first event with Anne Ulanov, um, you may not remember this, but in those days we were called four Ukrainian Jungians. And we were very horrified by what happened when the war broke out. And I think very understandably, we wanted to do something for our Ukrainian colleagues. And as we got further into the preparations for it, and we started actually to talk to our Ukrainian colleagues, um, we realized how enriched we were by that interaction and how much our Ukrainian colleagues were actually bringing. It was, it was really quite humbling. And so after the event, we decided to change our name to with Ukrainian colleagues, with Ukrainian unions, and to try to involve our Ukrainian colleagues as much as possible, um, because the depth of their work was so, um, well, it was so enriching and very powerful for us. It was a really um, extraordinary experience to be working alongside them. And then we had the idea that with the webinars, we would ask each of the keynote speakers um, if you would mind, if we paired you with a Ukrainian analyst. And um, this was to try to bring in something from Ukraine, some of um, what was going on with them into the webinar. And uh, we hoped also that our Ukrainian analysts would find it helpful and supportive um, and nourishing to be working with a, a senior analyst. Um, so I wondered if you would mind telling us a little bit how you found that rather unusual way of being asked to give a webinar and then being asked to do it with someone who's who you haven't met before and you don't know. And um, and then you met Serki. And I wondered if you could just say a little bit about what about that experience of working together. Well, it's been delightful to get to know Sergey. Um, I hadn't met him before. Um, I've been to the Ukraine uh, once. I went to Kiev. Uh, this would have been around 2000, I think, or so. There was a conference um, with all the Eastern European analysts and trainees, candidates, and interested people in outside of Kiev at a, at a retreat center. Uh, three or four days, it was a wonderful experience. Kiev is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen. Uh, the churches especially are, are uh, breathtaking and um, and the river and um, we had a wonderful time. Uh, it was like a party and uh, got to know each other and there were people from all over Eastern Europe at that time and, and quite a few from the UK who were very involved in training in Eastern Europe and Russia and Ukraine at that time. So that was my first exposure. And I did know uh, Valerie Zelensky quite well. Over the years, I met him a long time ago, around 2000. And uh, he was very much involved with the IEP and with uh, Angela Connolly, uh, I think was his analyst in Italy and traveled quite a lot. And we got to be pretty close. And um, so meeting Sergi was very special. He's the new president of the Union uh, Society in Ukraine, and uh, we've had a number of conversations. Uh, we've practiced our performance one time. We're going to do it again. We have rehearsals, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, this has been a, a lovely experience. And it really is a um, an opportunity to get to know each other and not only support but learn and uh, share. Um, I have very strong feelings about uh, what's going on and um, feeling uh, a lot of compassion for um, the Ukrainian colleagues who are suffering at this time from this horrible war. And that's why we titled our 
talk, uh, or I titled my part of the talk, um, um, Answer to Evil. It's a kind of takeoff on Jung's answer to Job. Answer to Job. Mm. Um, and uh, how do we face evil? And, and how do we deal with it when it uh, is, uh, when it comes upon us? It's, a, it's very much a Job question. And so we'll try to address that topic in, uh, in our uh, webinar uh, in May. Okay, I'm very intrigued. When you say you've had a rehearsal, what, what are you planning to do, actually? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, um, uh, I'm going to give a uh, talk. Uh, Sergi is going to give, you, give a talk, and we have a third person coming in as a voice. Uh, we're going to feature a, a very important dream that came to me a while ago, and uh, we're going to do a, a bit of active imagination. So it's a, it's a program in, in uh, three or four steps, and, and mm -hmm. we need to rehearse the timing and who does what when, and we have a little bit of music coming in. So oh. it's a kind of performance event. <laughs> okay, well, this sounds really exciting. I, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, Seki, can I can I turn to you now and um, ask you a question, if I may? Um, you've been very involved in WUJ since its earliest days, and in fact, you were um, one of the reading group facilitators. And um, and I don't know whether you can remember, but I remember at one of our earliest briefing meetings as we prepared for those reading groups, and there were going to be two analysts facilitating each group. And we were just discussing contingency plans because at that time there was a lot of bombing and maybe the power would go or the internet would go. And I remember you saying to me that um, I said, who will need backup? And you said that you would need backup. And um, and you said you would need backup because you didn't know if you would be alive the following week. And actually, I still choke up when I think about it now. Mm. And um, the shock of for all of us in the room who are so far away from the, the war as to the reality of the war. You know, we're sitting there trying to think about webinars and interpreters and times and that sort of stuff. And you're sitting there in the same meeting as us, um, thanks to the marvels of Zoom. And you didn't even know whether you would be alive the, the following week. It was such a reality check for us. Um, and I'm glad to say that you, you are still with us. And um, I'm so relieved about that. And from then you've been hugely supportive and um, you know, a great colleague to be working alongside with. And I wondered if I could ask you um, about WUJ from the Ukrainian perspective, if you could say a little bit um, for those of us who are not in a war situation um, and we want to offer solidarity and support, um, if you could explain to, to everyone listening in what it, what WUJ, what impact it has or what it means for you? Well, first of all, I would like to thank very much personally you, Katrin, and to thank all the members of your team, the organizers of this project, all the participants who were participating. And I would like to thank to the speakers of the webinars, those who have taken place already and those who are be planned. And I would like to thank all those who well, consented to participate in them. And I would like also to thank all the participants who are joining us in these webinars, because from my point of view, this is a very real and very valuable project, which helps Ukrainians, Ukrainian psychologists, and professionally and psychologically, you're supporting us enormously and you're supporting us financially as well. And financial support is given to those who need it. And I'm really grateful to you. And I'm really uh, 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 impressed by this, by your personal resources, your time, your you know, inspiration, which you are actually putting into this project. I'm so grateful to you. We are discussing these issues with my colleagues who are participating in these webinars more proactively or just uh, listening to the webinars. Those who were participating in the reading groups and in the initial projects which were launched. And everybody is so grateful and they really are enjoying this project. 
Definitely. It was very important for us, especially during the first months when the full-fledged aggression started. It was so important for us to feel this support. It was so important for us to understand that we are seen, that our colleagues understand the difficult situation, compromising situation in which we are found ourselves. And when uh, uh, one uh, lives in the country where the war is going on. At first, it's like a shock, but then it's, you seem, one seems to get used to it and uh, it becomes kind of mundane. But when you see the uh, response and support from the colleagues who now reside, thank God, in the peaceful countries, uh, and uh, uh, you one starts to understand that, that we really live in abnormal situation mm -hmm. and how important it is to look for and find the resources to support oneself. And then we are so grateful to the people, to the colleagues who are trying to support us and supporting us a lot. Well, this is what I wanted to share, first of all. And the, the webinars are extremely interesting. And I've been listening uh, to the previous webinars. And definitely, I also have, uh, speaking frankly, various experiences as a person who is participating in the webinars, as a listener to the webinars, who stays in Ukraine at present. The colleagues who are outside Ukraine at, at present, and the, the theoretical aspects which they uh, introduced in their reports, things they uh, tell uh, uh, are supporting us uh, a lot. And I'm very pleased to listen to them. And the parts uh, which are provided by the colleagues who live in Ukraine, and they tell us about our experience through which we are going through, it's traumatic for me because I'm part of it, I'm living in it, I'm experiencing it, and it's a very, it's difficult to listen to it. But I think that this part, uh, this, in, uh, this input of Ukrainian colleagues is so important because uh, this gives an opportunity to the listeners who are outside Ukraine to more maybe realistically perceive the situation and to see the challenges and difficulties which we have to overcome the psychologists who are staying and working and living in Ukraine and working in Ukraine at present. And as for the presentations and the report, uh, the report of Murray, well, it is going to be an extremely interesting report. I'm, I'm, uh, well, it was very interesting for me to listen uh, uh, the report, uh, Murray's report during our rehearsal. Uh, well, he is a very creative, a very experienced analyst, but he is a very responsible person and diligent reporter. And he organizes the work so that we all would be very well prepared. And Murray uh, 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 is a very compassionate and he understands myself and my situation and uh, he's caring about me, uh, uh, well, as a speaker. And the value of this webinar and of this, uh, repo of this uh, uh, report, which we are planning, is about the following, first of all. The situation, in spite of the fact that the war is going on, psychological atmosphere is changing in Ukraine. Uh, well, uh, well, the psychologists and the, even the citizens of Ukraine actually change their attitude. Well, we are tired already from the constant mm -hmm. stress and this expectation of the catastrophe. We are trying to prepare ourselves to something. But the new psychological needs uh, uh, appear alongside with this process. And we have to really understand, orient ourselves where we are, in what state we are, where should we move, what, should, what can we do with this, where we should look for new resources, not to become desperate, but to continue supporting each other and to work as psychologists, uh, to implement our functions. And uh, the ideas of Murray, which he is going to share in his report, uh, for me, is a very timely, timely resource uh, which we can use. 
at this phase, uh, at this experience, at the phase of the war, which is going on for more than 12 months, when the methods of crisis therapy and assistance are not sufficient to mm -hmm. uh, cope with the new challenges, especially because uh, this is lasting for more than one year now, for more than 12 months. So I'm absolutely confident and sure that all the participants, all the listeners will get a lot of interesting, useful information and aesthetic, aesthetic pleasure uh, well, uh, from the report of uh, Mr. Murray. Thank you very much, Saki. Um, I'm sure we will. I I wondered if I could um, just take that a little bit further, but you don't need to answer this this question if you'd rather not. But I was wondering when I was thinking um, about the fact we were going to be talking, I was thinking, I wonder what it is like for you to be working on this particular theme so deeply. Um, in preparation for this this webinar, that was my my first thought was um, that the war and you sort of referred to this. It's our Ukrainian colleagues are all working at such depth. I find um, with such archetypal big themes. I just wondered what it was like for you or is like for you to be working on answer to evil. Um, to grappling with that and my other question so you could choose which one you prefer or neither was um how you felt the war has changed you you know um I, I feel it's changed me from my my long distance away and I think many people would say that but you're right there in the the midst of it and um if you were willing to to share anything about that it would we'd be very interested to hear but so answer to evil and how the war has changed you. Well, the way the war changed me, well, I started to think about things and the perceived things which I've never thought of and were never perceiving them. Maybe I'm getting wiser due to this and maybe now I can understand, have a deeper understanding of other people. And maybe previously it was not accessible to me because there was lack of experience, which I am living through now, which I'm experiencing now. I am, well, how I work with evil, construct, well, I think there is only one method to work constructively with evil, to rely on good. And uh, as uh, it is uh, as much as possible to increase this good and uh, to increase the amount of this good around oneself. And again, uh, Mireille is going to talk about exactly this, uh, how to increase uh, the amount of good in spite of the huge amount of evil around us. Well, on that really rather wonderful note, um, I'd like to just ask Murray if there's anything you would like to add uh, before we finish. Well, Sergi has really um, said uh, uh, how grateful he and his colleagues in the Ukraine are. I just want to say that I'm also very grateful for what you're doing, because I think it does offer the Jungian community worldwide an opportunity to make a statement about what we stand for in the world. Mm. Uh, a couple of years ago, I suggested to Mr. Berg that when she becomes president, uh, uh, maybe she and a, a, a group of, um, a she could set up a committee to consider what does Jungian psychology stand for in the world today? What are our basic values? And she did take the uh, initiative to set up that committee. We've met once, we'll meet again this summer. But I think this is an example of what we stand for. We stand for compassion, solidarity, democracy, independence, uh, the right to choose how one wants to live um, and not be dominated by bullies, um, uh, whether, um, uh, other, whether they're other countries or other individuals. So I think we stand for individuation. We stand for 
individual freedom. And I think what you're doing, Catherine, is really making a statement along those lines. And I'm very happy that you're doing it and that you have so much support from the Jungian community for what you're doing. I think it's a tremendous um, plus um, for all of us that this is taking place. I want to thank you. Well, thank you very much. I feel very much just that I'm the facilitator of it and it's um, it has a sort of a spirit of its own and I'm very grateful to everyone's response and the huge generosity of people's response and giving up time, giving up money, turning up. The, um, the amount of preparation that goes into each webinar, it's really, um, I, I think that libido that is invested in the, the webinars and all the work behind the scenes, how can that not be a force for good, really? So um, I think we're all in the service of something, something bigger. And it is a privilege to be part of that. This is an answer to evil. <laughs> it is an answer to evil. Yes. Gosh. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to beat that as an ending. May I thank you both very much for, for your contributions. Thank you. Nice to see you, Sergio.